Assalamu alaikum. This is a lecture 5 of information and communication technologies and in this lecture I will conclude the discussion about the basic parts of computer systems and the final topic for the parts of the computer system is the storage devices and in this lecture I will give you a brief description about these storage devices and basic storage concepts. There are different types of storage devices and mainly many storage devices in the recent past have been using magnetic storage devices. Along with the magnetic storage devices there are different tape drives and optical discs which have been used previously uh, quite often. There are some devices which are currently in use are also referred as flash memory and storage cards. However, with the uh, advent of enterprises and internet, we have different kind of storage such as enterprise storage and storage available online through cloud networks. So in this lecture we will overview various kinds of storage devices and the techniques which the storage devices employ to store information and data. So a basic definition of storage device is that any device which is capable to hold data instructions and information for future use is called a storage device. So usually a hard drive is a typical example of a storage device which holds your data along with the operating system. A storage device or in other words a storage medium is also called secondary storage. It is the physical material on which the computer keeps data, instructions and information such as hard disk drive or a flash memory. A storage device is the computer hardware that records or retrieves items to and from the storage media. So there are two basic steps for reading and writing information to and from the storage devices. So reading is the process referred as transferring in information from the storage into the main memory. On the other hand, writing the information is the placing or storing information from the memory back to the storage medium. So memory and storage devices have different kinds of volatility. As you know from the previous lecture that a memory or a RAM is a volatile device and when you turn off the power the contents of the memory are eliminated from the memory and you have to retrieve those contents again when you turn the power on. However, the storage devices are non-volatile. That means if you turn off the power, your contents are saved and you can retrieve the information same as previously. So here is an illustration of volatility. You can see the information displayed on the main screen of your computer is typically accessible from the RAM. So, so the RAM has brought this information from the storage device. So once that information is visible and not saved back to the storage it is the volatile information and when you turn the power off the screen will turn off and the contents of the RAM will remove. However, the contents will be retained on the, onto the storage if you have saved the contents. So, memories and uh, storage devices are mired in the same units. For example, in the previous lecture we mentioned the smallest accessible element in the memory or smallest possible location into the memory is one byte which is composed of eight bits. However, byte is a very uh, smallest 
element into the memory therefore you use different measures to calculate or measure the size or amount of the memory and a common type which is used is the kilobyte which contains about 1000 bytes and usually the files uh, the word files or simple text documents have the size in the kbs so when you have more bytes usually about a million bytes your size is measured into megabytes or mbs so it will contain about 1 million bytes and in terms of number of bytes it will contain 2 raised to power 20 bytes your memory devices more specifically ram and other flash memory is typically measured in gigabytes which contain about a billion bytes or 2 raised to power 30 bytes some storage media devices in current uh, age are measured in terabyte which contain about multiple or 1 trillion bytes or 2 raised to power 40 bytes so as you can see uh, with each exact uh, value there are exact number of bytes specified this is just for your information and you do, you do not have to worry about how much uh, byte usually are contained in a kilobyte or a megabyte but you should have an understanding that a kilobyte the kilo stands for 1000 a mega stands for a hundred thousand and sorry a mega stands for a one million and a giga stands for one billion and a tera stands for one trillion the next four measures are quite big to measure in terms of storage and rarely any device in our current use use this kind of measures for example we have petabytes exabytes zettabytes or iota bytes with each have different number of billions specified next to their rows so just like the memory devices storage devices have different access time and the access time usually rise with the distance from the processor so if your storage device is placed uh, or memory device is placed away from the processor the access time is likely to rise so access time measure is the amount of time it takes for a storage device to locate an item onto the storage medium this is the time required to deliver an item from the memory to the processor so as just like the previous lecture you can see the registers have the fastest access time then we have different level of cache memory and then we have the main memory so until then we have the memory devices from the main memory we have we, we may require some information which is stored on a different medium for example the highest accessible memory device or the storage device is the fixed rigid disk and then we have optical devices such as cd and dvd roms and then we have magnetic devices which have the lowest accessible sorry which has the highest accessible time and which is the which is placed most away from the processors so again as the access time increases the cost is more likely to increase and the size is more likely to decrease and as you move away from the processor the size is more likely increase and the cost per byte or a kilobyte is most likely to decrease So from a general perspective, memory usually is a fast transfer device. On the other hand, storage is a slow transfer device. So in the memory, we usually refer to the RAM memory, which are the item which contains the items waiting to be interpreted and executed 
by the CPU processor. Then uh, the memory information is transferred to the cache information, which is transferred to the registers, and registers are directly accessible to the CPU. On the other hand, if you move toward the storage devices, we have a common device called hard disk, which contains operating system, application software, user data, and information including your personal data such as photos, music, videos, and backups. You can have different kinds of other storage such as using memory cards or USB flash drives. If you move uh, towards the recent past, we had different kinds of optical devices which are quite uh, in use today but these are not quite prevalent as much in the past. So these devices usually had or disk usually contained software and different uh, movies and music content. And if you move more back into the time you had the tape drive which was used to have the backup data. So just like any other technology, the story technology has evolved and progressed. However, there are two main categories of storage technology which were quite prevalent. The first is the magnetic storage and the second is the optical storage. So as from the name suggests, magnetic storage uses a magnet to store information and it is the most common form of storage. And the magnetic tapes are found in hard drives, floppy drives, tapes and all magnetic drives work on the same principle. On the other hand, optical storage uses the laser technology to write and to read information from the optical disks. Along with these two main categories, there is a third category of storage which is becoming widely accepted in, in these days which is the solid state disk storage and it is increasingly being used in the computer system and it is more commonly found in the devices such as a digital camera and media player. Usually solid state disk drives are faster than the magnetic and optical storage. However, again if you prefer the fast access time, the cost per byte will increase. So you will have a costly solid state disk than a hard drive disk. So let's go all back into the time and explore one of the fundamental storage device which was quite prevalent around the globe and it was the floppy disk. You will be amazed to know that how much information a floppy could hold. And the capacity of a 3.5 inch high density floppy disk was 1.44 MB. And the computer had, every computer had a floppy read device. So the floppy disk drive is entered to its reader and the reader reads with the disk drive by spinning it at around 300 rounds per minute. So the floppy disk drive contained of different sectors. So as you can see it was a round disk with the different marked sectors. So usually floppy disk had two sides and there were 80 tracks on to the floppy drive. So the round circles are termed as track and on each track we had about 18 sectors as the numbering suggests we usually had the 18 sectors and in each sector the floppy could contain the information about 512 bytes. So to compute this 
disk storage capacity we had to multiply the number of sides multiply by the number of tracks multiply by the number of sectors per track multiply by the information a track can save so which was equivalent to about 1.4 megabytes so which was a lot of memory back into the days one of the critical aspect with uh, related with the magnetic storage device is that the magnetic disk must be formatted before use the format draws a tracks on to the disk and tracks is divided usually into the number of sectors as described in the previous slide and each sector can hold some amount of data onto the drive which the reader can read so if you had to find the data onto the disk each track and sector is labeled with a number and you can access the data by the numbered tracks however there were some tracks which are reserved for special purposes for example your hard disk drive may contain some boot information or your floppy drive contain some information about its input and output system along with this information there is the information about the files in the in the computational terms it is referred as the meta data that is the data about the contained data and usually it had a file allocation table and there were different file allocation techniques for example one of the technique fat32 file allocation technique 32 bit was quite prevalent into the hard drive and it has been used widely in uh, the desktop computers there is advanced version of nt FS file system which is the new technology file system so before the FAT32 there were different structures to store information depending upon the size of the file and usually a FAT32 structure can contain a file up to 4 GB however there is no such restriction and the limit of the file in, in the NTFS has a larger value and onto the storage the data is organized into some clusters and these clusters are equivalent to the uh, capacity of your operating system that it can handle so if you look diagrammatically we may have a structure of a FAT32 file system and we have some boot record some reserved area some file allocation tables and this area contains the data and this is marked as an unused area so this table shows a fat32 white directory entry structure it is the information about the data stored on your drive so for every fat32 byte directory entry this structure is used and for each metadata or the information there is a specific size into the byte onto the memory so for example if we had to specify a directory we had to save its name for example if you create a new folder you have to provide its name and that name is stored in another place than the data into the folder so usually it is a short name and it is stored in 11 bytes in FAT32 structure. Then you may have the read and the write permission and these are file attributes like read only and write only or read and write only. Then there is another information uh, such as create time, file type, lost modified time, lost access time, write time, write date, etc. 
so all the information must be stored for the directory or file to access the information about the data or in other words metadata the most common and the primary storage in today's computers is still hard disk however many computers have been using solid state disk but hard disk are quite widespread hard disk usually has two or more aluminum platters each platter has again two sides much like a floppy drive and your drive usually spin about 5400 rounds to 15000 rounds per minute and usually the data is found on your hard drive in 9.5 milliseconds or less time with the uh, spin capacity and the current technology being used so the hard disk usually consists of several inflexible circular platters that store items electronically hard disk contains one or more inflexible circular platters that use a magnetical particles to store data instructions and information so a hard disk may have different capacities as ranging from gbs to few terabytes and it can contain different platters usually from two or more to read and write information from the hard disk you have different read and write heads so there are different cylinders which are helpful to move your platters on to move the heads of your read and the write hands again there are different sectors and track and information is stored into the sectors of each track there are different revolutions such as spins per minute and there are different transfer and access time rates depending upon the technology being used so if you look at the working of the hard disk usually the first step is the command from the cpu to the circuit board that controls the movement of the head actuator and a small motor in the second step the small motor spins the platter or the disk drive while the computer is running so when a software requests some disk access read write heads determine the current or the new location of the data so when the data information is accessed head actuator positions the read and write heads on over the correct location on the platter to read and write data so again much like the floppy drives hard disk usually have a similar characteristic and the size of the hard disk is calculated in the similar way in which we have calculated the size of a floppy disk so here is the typical characteristics of a 120 gb hard disk and it contains three platters which means you can write on the both sides of three platters so there will be six read and write heads so we have usually a high amount of cylinders which is in this case is above 16000 and we have different uh, amount of size for writing in each sector and typically it is again 512 bytes per sector and we have 6 the three sectors in each track so but with the storage we have a higher value of the cylinders therefore we can store a larger amount of the data onto the storage uh, disk so for this typical hard disk it revolves about 7200 rounds per minute 
and it has a transfer rate of 133 MB per second and access time is less than 9 milliseconds. So again with the uh, storage devices uh, and magnetic disk you have similar use space and the free space uh, mechanism. The use space can contain the information about your data, the actual data and the operating system code and instruction. The hard disk uh, uh, is very prone to the crash and a crash occurs when a read and a write head touches the surface of the platter. So when the hard disk is spinning on a higher uh, rounds per minute, it creates a cushion of air that floats the read and write head above the information, which restricts the touching of head with the platter, therefore no crash occurs. However, if the head touches the platter, the hard disk is likely to crash. So the distance between the head and the platter is very minute and it is approximately 2 millionth of an inch. Even a smoke particle or a dust particle or a human hair could render the drive unstable. So as you can see you have a head placed on a platter and there is a very marginal distance between the head and the platter and you can see if the amount of smoke is present your head is likely to collide with the platter and dust particle is even larger than the smoke and a human hair is even greater. So you must always keep a backup of your hard disk whenever your hard disk is likely to expose to external environments. Therefore, if your hard drive crashes, you have a marginal chance to recover data from, the, uh, from a crashed hard drive. Therefore, always keep a backup of your personal and most required data. Much like the internal storage devices, you may have some external storage devices and one of them is the external hard disk device. An external hard disk device is similar to the internal hard disk device but it is a separate freestanding hard disk that connects to your computer with a cable or in some cases wirelessly. Similar to the external hard disk, you have removable hard disk which is a hard disk that you insert and remove from a derive. So these are quite common in these days and it, both internal and external hard disks are available in miniature sizes which you can use in portable laptops. So if you have the external hard disk you have two benefits for example you can have the storage and the speed of a hard disk and you have the affordability and the portability of a floppy disk. So there are several variants which you have uh, which you can use and these are available in market. So the first one is the high capacity floppy disk which stores about 750 MB of data however it is not widely used but on the other hand we have the hot Wrappable hard disk which connect through a USB port and these kinds of external hard disks are quite used widely. So some of you may have some tape recorder players uh, which use some tape drives and it uses again the magnetic technology and tape is a magnetically coated ribbon of plastic which is capable of storing large amounts of data information at a very low cost. A tape drive reads and writes data 
and information on a tape and it is best used for infrequently accessed data or for example backup solutions so these drives are used primarily to store a data which is not used often and in which you have a very least amount to pay so apart from the magnets the optical drives are also used for storage an optical disc usually consists of a flat round and portable disc made of a metal plastic and lacquer that is written and read by a laser again this type of storage has the uh, same similar mechanism which contains disk sectors to store information but instead of a circular it has a circular cylinders it has a single track that spirals to edge of the disk and it again typically stores software data digital photos movies and videos and there are different kinds of optical disk which allow you to have information which is read only or write only or rewritable optical disks commonly store in items in a single track that spirals from center of the disk to the edge track is divided into evenly sized sectors so the common technology in the optical disk drive is the cd compact disk and dvd digital versatile disk so again with each of these technologies there are different variants and various formats however none of these are standardized and these optical drives allow home users to create cds and dvd however all of these uh, versatile or compact disc cannot be read in all players and you may have to uh, require a sophisticated player for each kind of drive for example you cannot read a dvd into a cd rom so a dvd uh, rom storage capacities usually depend on the number of files and the layers it needs per size so an outdated dvd usually had the capacity of 4.7 gb and it had one side and a one layer and if there are two layers in the one side the capacity is usually doubled and for a two layer and a two size uh, two sides dvd we usually have the storage of 17 gb so here are again different disk types dvd r is a dvd uh, readable disk and there are different technologies used for each type and we have different capacities for each type the sl stands for single layer and gl stands for double layer another kind of a disk is a blue array disk blu ray disk usually have a larger capacity than a single layer dvd and a single layer blu-ray disc usually contains the data about 27 gb that is more than 13 hours of standard video more than two hours of high definition video and if there is a double layer blu-ray disc the size of the data is 54 gb which is equivalent to more than 20 hours of standard video and more than 4.5 hours of high definition digital video so this slide shows a comparison between different versions of optical disk comparing their drive speed and the writing time so as you compare your the first generation optical disk named as CD you can see the capacity to access 
the data is about 1.7 megabits per second and a max speed of 65 megabits per second. A DVD is much faster on the base speed and even faster onto the max speed. And the CD usually had about 56x means 66 times speed upgradation. On the other hand, DVD can be sped up to about 20 times. And the Blu-ray disc is even faster, but it can be sped up to a lower value. So this compares the drive speed ranging from 1 to 24 times. And as you can see, with each increase, there is an increase into the data rate. So the last com column shows the write time for a single layer DVD-R and as you can see with each improvement in the drive speed the time decreases proportionally. So the third type of storage technology in our discussion is the solid state storage. So in the SSD devices the data is stored physically using the switches instead of magnets and lasers. This technology uses integrated circuits assemblies as a memory to store data persistently and there is no magnet or laser therefore it is very fast in terms of data transfer. So if you compare the size and the price for byte for byte, the standard magnetic or optical storage is very less expensive and more reliable than the solid state storage. Memory devices can move data in much less time than any mechanical storage device. Therefore, solid state devices have no moving parts and therefore more reliable to store data electronically and they are less likely to collapse because the disks uh, are not present into the SSD and there is no movement of the disk. So unlike standard devices, solid state devices do not need to move a head or a sensor to find the data or to convert it from the magnetic or optical form into the electronic form therefore the time spent in these uh, two tasks is avoided and the access time is less in the SSD than the other storage mediums. So here is a small comparison between a solid state disk and a hard disk drive. So the solid state disk and hard disk drives are manufactured usually in the same size for the current computers. So as you can see there are different mechanisms in the solid state disk. We use the solid NAND flash base gates and in the hard disk drive we have magnetic uh, rotating flatters. So there is a different size for each of the drives and there are different weights. So as you can see an SDD is a SSD is a very light device than the hard disk drive. The performance is higher into the SSD and the power consumption is less than the HDD. So SSD can operate in different temperatures therefore it is usable, uh, very useful for cameras to operate in a very hot and cold weather. So it is more likely to stay safe from the shocks from the electricity. And it does not produce any noise. However, hard disk drives produce some amount of noise due to the rotating of letters. And the endurance is higher in the SSD, it usually has about more than 2 million hours mean time before 
failure in comparison about less than 1 million times before failure. So again SSD is faster. It has the lower access time than the hard disk drive as compared to an enterprise hard disk. It has better performance at the I.O. level about uh, usually SSDs are at least 15 times faster than the hard disk drive. SSD have less failure rate, it saves more energy, it consumes less CPU power and it has less input output request time and it has less amount of uh, storage than the hard disk drive. Therefore, backup storage are preferably saved onto the hard disk drive and the contents which you want to inquire quite uh, repetitively you should use uh, an SSD drive. So along with the storage drives we have different kind of memory and one of the famously known memory is a flash memory storage. So it is a non volatile type of memory and it can be arranged electronically and you can have the ability to rewrite the information on flash memory. Flash memory is a long term and updatable storage. It is more durable mainly because it does not contain the moving part and it is also shock resistant. The flash memory is present in different formats such as RAM and ROM in cameras and USB drives. On the other hand, memory card is a removable flash memory device that you insert and remove from a slot in a computer or a mobile device or a card reader. So here are typical examples of a flash memory drive and here are the some of all dated secure memory cards. So you had a different version for example we had a common version of a secure digital card, micro SD card, micro secure digital high capacity card, an XP picture card, some had the memory stick and a memory stick micro version. So as I mentioned in the previous slide the typical type of flash memory is a USB flash drive. So it is a small drive which you can plug into a USB port or even in some mobile devices. The storage capacity of the USB flash drive is usually measured in gigabytes. The USB flash drive allows you to transfer data at different pace. For example, in some older versions, you had the ability to transfer data about 12 MB per second. However, with the progress of the technology in flash drives, especially with the USB 3.0, you have the ability to transfer data at a rapid pace. Uh, some USB flash drives had specific features built into them. For example, they can include fingerprint readers which restrict access to only authenticated users. There are numerous benefits of the flash drive. For example, they use a very minute power and they have no fragile parts which move therefore they are more flexible and more reliable and for more uh, for most capacities the flash drives have the same size and the size are very small and these are very light on the other hand the data stored on those flash drives is impervious to any mechanical shock or even in the magnetic field the data remains the same and even the scratches and dust does not harm the data. 
stored data densely is, is used in USB drives as compared to many removable media. So another common storage in the computer is like the memory card is the personal computer or PC cards. These cards are used for different purposes and these add capabilities to the computers and these are much similar or equivalent to the size of the credit card and these devices are commonly used in notebook computers. However, these are replaced by some advanced versions referred as expert or express cards. So these are uh, con these consist of three different variants depending upon the thickness and their size and the categories are type 1, type 2 and type 3 cards. Type 1 has the thickness of 3.3 mm and it can be used as a RAM or a flash memory. Type 2 cards can be used as a LAN card, a sound card, TV tuner, hard disk or other storage. A type 3 card can be used for a rotating storage such as a hard disk. So a small amount of data can also be stored onto the credit cards or similar cards named as smart cards. These cards store data on a microprocessor embedded onto the small card itself. So it contains input, process, output and storage capabilities. So usually the card communicates with the external services using the card reading devices such as ticket readers or ATM machines. So a typical example is a credit card with a chip. So the chip stores the data and eventually may be used for cash or hotel use for electronic keys. So apart from your personal storage, there are different mediums now available for you to store your data online or using an enterprise storage. So online storage are, are the services on the web that provide storage for minimal monthly fee or usually some storage is provided free and then upgrades are required to uh, require you to pay. Usually the online storage can contain files or the storage directories which you can access from any computer within the web access. So the large files can be downloaded instantaneously and others can be authorized to access and participate on the same data using the same online storage access. On the other hand, enterprise storage devices allow you to store huge volumes of data and information for large businesses. These use a special hardware for heavy use with a maximum availability and a maximum efficiency. So this concludes uh, our discussion about the storage devices and for different types of storage requirements you may require different kind of storage technology. However, for a typical power user you may require some 2 terabyte hard disk and you can even employ to use the cloud storage, optical disk drive, portable hard disk and USB flash drive to transfer data from one place to another. However, if you are working in an enterprise and which enterprise allows you to access to a desktop computer, a one terabyte hard disk is enough and optional optical disk drive can be used 
and smart card readers, tape drives for some uh, storage of the uh, non-essential data or the historical records and USB uh, flash drives to transfer data from one place to another. Similarly, if you uh, are an enterprise user, right, in the case of a business, you may require to have a server or a mainframe, you will like to have a network storage server. And a 40 terabyte hard disk system is quite useful for a small business. Again, you can use different optical disk servers and microfilms to store your data. So if you want to read more about the topic, we can go through the recommended books or you can conduct a question and answer or you can ask me any question through the designated medium. Thank you very much for your time.